you will, turn to Psalm 96. We're going to look at verses 1 through 10. As this is our singing night tonight, as already been mentioned, I'd like to do you know, a singing devotional. And based on the song uh, that we're going to be singing, it really resonates with this passage. Especially verse 1. But I wasn't thinking about how in preparation for this devotional that it would be coming right after the memorial for Brad Hagerman. And, and I want you to think about what... And then the song that's behind us is the song we're going to be singing. But it, it's this idea of coming before the presence of God. And I didn't think about how the example that Brad gave us and how challenging it was for him to even come before the presence of God in worship. And, and yet he did. And I loved hearing all the different examples concerning uh, things that people remember about Brad. And that was one that very much resonated, that he came before the presence of God. We get to do that tonight. And so when I, when I read this first verse, it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Notice it says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. That is the focus of this song with only a holy God. This is why we worship him. This is why we sing to him. But you notice that first verse, it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. And for many of us, this will be a new song. Uh, and uh, it's, if you listen to songs of faith and praise, um, or, or songs of, I, I, I think it's, that's, that's what it was. But uh, I learned this song, and it is such an encouragement. And so I want us to sing all of the, the verses of this. And then I'll make some points and uh, we'll conclude. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else could whisper? Oh, 
could rescue me from my failing? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him Father? Only a holy God. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. I'm reminded of Brad Hagerman and how he has experienced being an heir through God. He's experiencing the inheritance right now. And something that we mention is he walked across that goal line. And I love that concept that as he worked so hard to approach the throne of God when he would come and worship with us, he's getting to experience what we're going to experience for all eternity. The question in this evening is, are you a child of God this evening? Who else could rescue you from your failing? Who else would offer his only son? And who else invites you to call him father, only holy God? Are you, have you called him Father tonight? If you are subject to the Lord's invitation, I pray that you'll come while together we stand and as we sing.